I remember in middle school, there was a, we played basketball and uh, we were in um, Tuba City boarding school. And, and there was a cheer that said, uh, fry bread, fry bread, mutton stew, we got spirit, how about you? And so, um, you know, we got spirit, yes we do. We're, there was this cheer that went back and forth. That's not the spirit I'm talking about. So, you know, don't, don't, uh, that's not the spirit that I'm talking about. We are this morning going to be looking at the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is, uh, is fascinating to study. It, it really is. Um, it's something that, that is challenging to us because um, we are physical beings and it's hard to grasp spiritual things. That, that's just difficult that how can... Uh, spirit be everywhere at one time. Uh, but there's a lot of differing views about the Holy Spirit, anywhere from uh, like Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, Jews, and others, they deny that the Holy Spirit is God. Um, but then you've got others that will say that the Holy Spirit basically almost possesses you, like you have no power. The Holy Spirit overtakes you and uh, controls your entire life. So there's a lot of different um, views about the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, I'm hoping that as disciples of Christ, we're going to be able to share who the Holy Spirit is. And this is a drawing. It just tries to help explain uh, who God, the Holy Spirit, is. So God... There's only one God. The Bible says it multiple times. There's just one God. But the Bible says that the Father is God. The Bible says that the Son is God. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is God. So God is the Son. God is the Father. God is the Holy Spirit. But yet they are one being. So there's one being in three persons. Because the Holy Spirit is not the Son. And the Son is not the Father. And the Father is not the Holy Spirit. But they are one. And so there's this unity that there's this three in one. And that's where some people use the word trinity, tri-unity, three in one. And so that's where that word comes from. And, uh, and so this is who we're talking about this morning is the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit. As was read uh, in Romans chapter 5, I appreciate uh, Miles doing that for us. We've been going through Romans and uh, trying to focus in on a few topics of, of the book of Romans. And the Holy Spirit is one of those. And this verse here is, is one of those verses that says that God gave us the Holy Spirit. And I want us to think about that idea. God gave the Holy Spirit to us. That's That's amazing. You know, we think that God sent his son for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son. And sometimes we forget that he gave the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes that, that can be an overlooked gift. And man, what an underestimation on our part, right, is, is we constantly are thinking how God gave Jesus, but he gave the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who was given to us. Romans chapter 5 in verse 5. In, well, in Acts chapter 5 in verse 32, we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. You, talking to the Ephesian Christians, you were sealed in Christ with the Holy Spirit of promise who is given as a pledge of our inheritance. God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, Galatians 4. God gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge, 2 Corinthians 1. God gave us the Spirit as a pledge, 2 Corinthians 5. And God gives His Holy Spirit to you, 1 Thessalonians 4, 8. Man, we could, those are some verses that over and over and over, God gave us His Spirit, Right? Now, if we look, is not only did God give His Spirit to live with us, because in the Old Testament we see examples of the Holy Spirit coming on uh, people, and uh, there, there's examples of God being with His people, but this is a new concept. This is something different. 
that is said that the Holy Spirit would live in us. God would actually live in his people, not just with his people, in his people. In Romans chapter 8, but if the Spirit dwells in you, that means lives, if the Spirit lives in you, he will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who lives in you. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. You see, these are, these are verses that show that God, one of the mysteries that wasn't known in all of the Old Testament is not only would God come to save his people, but God would actually live in his people. Amazing, again, that, that God does that for us. Now, there's a couple things that if we're saying that God gave the Holy Spirit, God gave the Holy Spirit to live in us, then how do you and I receive the Holy Spirit? That's the question that we want to look at. But I looked at all the verses that we could see and there's some unique events that is not for everybody. Okay, there's some unique events that happen when it talks about receiving the Holy Spirit. For instance, in John chapter 20, in verse 22, when Jesus was meeting with the apostles after the resurrection, Jesus, uh, he came to them and it says, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. We're not going to receive the Holy Spirit like that. Jesus is not going to breathe on us and, and give us the Holy Spirit. But there's also something unique about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you guys have been to some of our uh, Bible classes, you'll see that uh, we, we've tried to emphasize and show that in Acts chapter 2, there was the baptism of the Holy Spirit that came on the apostles. And then we also see the first Gentile converts in Acts chapter 10. That was a unique situation that the Holy Spirit came on these individuals. We don't have any other examples that all of us as Christians are receiving a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Another unique event that happened was found in Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 19. I didn't write it down, but uh, Acts 19. Um, that... Uh, I guess Acts starts in Acts chapter 6. Anyway, you guys can have this and, and look at it. The apostles to the, to the Christians would lay hands on Christians so that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Let's look. I, I, I tried to look at this. It said the apostles prayed for the Christians. Uh, they had already been baptized into Christ. So the apostles prayed for the Christians that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Then the apostles began laying their hands on them, and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. So those are some unique situations. We don't have the apostles here with us today where they would lay hands on us so that we would receive this uh, miraculous type of, of, of Holy Spirit. Okay, so... Again, if those don't quite make sense, come and we can, we can study that out some more. But those are unique events, not for everybody. Well, what about us? Okay, what about us? We don't have Jesus in the flesh. We don't have the apostles in the flesh. So what do we do? Do we receive the Holy Spirit? Yes. So let's look at some of these verses. Luke chapter 11, Jesus tells a parable, a story about prayer and asking. And he says that, um, talking about how generous his father is, that uh, he, won't, he won't give, if you ask for bread, he's not going to give you a rock, you know, those kind of things. So how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now people are like, well, all I have to do is ask the Holy Spirit and he'll come on me. Well, let's look at all some other verses. In Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 13 and 14, Paul says to the Christians, in Christ, so he's talking to those who've already been baptized into Christ. He said, in Christ, after listening to the message of truth. So remember, who's talking? Who's he talking to? He 
He's talk, this is Paul who's talking to Christians. They've already been, been saved, right? So he's going to talk in past tense. So Paul says, in Christ, after listening to the message of truth, after you listen to that, the gospel, you also, you also, what did they do? You believed. So they heard the message, then they believed the message. And then he said, you were sealed in Christ with the Holy Spirit of promise. So it's not just asking for the Holy Spirit. You need to also be listening to the gospel message, the truth. And then not only hear it, but believe that message. Look at another example. Paul also tells the Christians in Galatians chapter 3 and in chapter 4, or chapter 3, verse 2, and in verse 14, he asked them, he said, Did you guys receive the Spirit by works of law or hearing with faith? And he's going to go on to say, You received the Spirit through faith. It's when you believe. You see, it wasn't through works of the law. That, that, that's not how you guys receive the, the Spirit. It was by your faith. And then in Acts chapter 5, when Peter is preaching, he's going to say, We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who, what? Obey. I thought it was just asking, or is it just believing? Or is it that you have to obey? Well, the answer is, Yes, it, it's to all of those things, right? All of those things tie in. Let's look at another lesson that Peter gave. Peter was preaching to non-Christians, okay? Notice the difference. The other times he was talking to Christians, and he said, this is what you guys did. Now he's talking to non-Christians. They have believed he's been preaching to them, but... Once they came to believe the message in Acts chapter 2, they said, what do we need to do? And Peter said, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So now we see that repentance and baptism are part of receiving the Holy Spirit. Paul tells Titus, in Titus chapter 3, he said, Titus, I want you to remind those brethren, I want you to remind the Christians that God saved us, past tense. God saved us, not on the basis of works or deeds. That sounds like not according to the law, right? Which we have done in righteousness. But God saved us according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So you see, baptism has this tie-in to receiving uh, the Holy Spirit. So if I took out some of the, all of the wording and just looked at the bold words, then you would say, how do we receive the Holy Spirit today? Could we ask, seek? that I want to know God, I want to come to God, that I want to know Him, then we would need to listen to the gospel. We would need to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came down to earth in human form, that He lived a perfect and sinless life, and that He was willing to go to the cross so that all of the sins of all time would be put on Him, and then He would die. He would suffer for those sins. That's the good news. He took away our sins. He was buried for three days, but then he resurrected. He overcame death. He overcame the power of sin. And so by that message of Jesus, I come to believe. I believe in him. I believe that he's the one that has the power to free me from my sins. He has the power to free me from darkness. He has the power to free me from the, the, the enslavement that I, that's constantly addictions and all these other things that, that overpower me that I seem I can't stop. I believe that he has that power. That's faith. I trust him. I trust that message. And then he says, I obey him. Well, how? Repent and each of you be baptized. 
Remember the word repent is I turn away from that old way of life. I die to that old way of life. I'm, I'm done with that old person. I now belong to Jesus. Jesus is the one who has power over my life. I want to do whatever he wants me to do. That's that washing of regeneration. When I repent, I am baptized. And the, the word baptized in the Bible is immersion, to dip, to plunge, to bury. You are put under the water, this washing, and you're regenerated. You're made brand new. Romans chapter 6, it says that we're resurrected to a new life. We are a new creation, a new creature. We're somebody different. The old you has been buried. So when we ask, we're seeking, God will provide the gospel. If you're seeking to know, he will provide a way for you to, to know his son, Jesus Christ. That's why I love Acts chapter 8. You know that uh, here's an ethos a guy from Ethiopia, and he's on his way back. And God sends one preacher who is preaching and teaching and doing all these awesome things, and he sends him to this one guy going back to Ethiopia. If somebody is seeking, God will find a way to get that gospel message to you. Maybe through radio, maybe through the internet, maybe through your friend at work, maybe through a pamphlet that was just laying there while you were waiting at, at the hospital visit. You know, whatever it might be, God is going to provide a way when you're seeking. And once that message is brought to you, you have a choice. Do I believe that message or do I reject it? That's a choice that, that, that God leaves up to you. He doesn't force you. That's a choice on you. Then if I do believe that message, then we can also choose to obey that message or not. When he tells us to repent, I can choose to repent or not to repent. When he tells us to be baptized, I can choose to be baptized or not to be baptized. That's, that's our choice. That's a decision that he has given to us. So what's interesting to me is as we look into Acts chapter 2 in verse 37, 38, and 41, I'm going back a little bit and you can see that this is the first gospel message. This is the first time that somebody is preaching the whole thing about Jesus' death, his burial, his resurrection. This is really that first time. And when they heard this, wasn't that one of the things that we saw? When they heard this message, they had a choice. What are they going to do with that message? Well, it doesn't say they believed. It doesn't say that. But it says they were pierced or cut or pricked in their heart. Why would that be? You see, the message cut them, touched them. And they chose to believe that message. It doesn't, it doesn't use the word believe, but you can infer that's what they did. They believed and and it says, they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, what shall we do? Okay, we believe it. We believe Jesus is the Christ. We believe he died for our sins. We believe that. Now what? Now, now what? And this is what's amazing is the first time after the full gospel message has been preached, this seems like where you might hear a sinner's prayer, but that's not brought up. You might say, just ask Jesus into your heart. That's not brought up. It says, repent. Turn away from your old self, your old sins. Turn away from that. And each of you be immersed, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. Now that the sins are washed away, who can come and live inside of us? You see. The Holy Spirit. Remember Rome, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6? It says, your body is a what? Temple of the Holy Spirit. But God cannot be united with sin. God can't be united with sin. So it's not until those sins are washed away. Now, who can come and live inside of me? God. God, the Holy Spirit, can live inside of me. 
So then when you get down to verse 41, it says, so then, so this is where he's just telling them what to do. Like if you, and they have a choice now. But by the time you get down to verse 41, so then those who had received the word. Remember the lesson on like a soft soil? You receive that, that, that message into your heart. Those who received that message, they were baptized. They were immersed into Jesus. And that day, there were added 3,000 people to God's family. See, that's, that's, that's how we receive the Holy Spirit today. That's how you can understand as we look at all of these examples, that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Well, what now? Okay, if I know God sent His Holy Spirit, I know He sent His Holy Spirit to be in us, and now I know how to receive the Holy Spirit. Well, what now? Well, one, if you didn't know, now you know, right? And so that's uh, something that, that you can see that Maybe you hadn't studied that before. Maybe you didn't know that God sent His Holy Spirit to live in you. Now you do. But think about this. If you have not received the Holy Spirit, then you have not received the gift of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross either. They go hand in hand. The forgiveness of sins and the Spirit coming into us, they go hand in hand. So if you have not received the Spirit... You need to believe. You need to repent. You need to be immersed into Christ. So I hope that this has been clear enough today to say, you know what? That's what I need. I know I need to be in Christ. Number three, for those of us who have been immersed into Christ, for those of us who have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, I hope that we haven't forgotten because we do. It's very easy to forget sometimes that this body does not belong to me. This is a temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in me. I belong to him. So it's no longer I who live, but God who lives inside of me. That I am supposed to represent him. I'm supposed to be like an ambassador for him. That as I'm going to the grocery store, as I'm going to school, as I'm going to work, as I'm working with family, as I'm working in all of these situations, my life is to represent him and to think that sometimes, sometimes we, we, we think of that gift of Jesus and how powerful it is. It is. We, we don't want to underestimate Jesus, but don't underestimate that God has given his spirit to live inside of us as well. That's an amazing gift that we, we, we've got to cherish. If anything... If anything, today, I pray that this was an encouragement to your faith. Maybe it helps you with, maybe with one step closer on this discipleship, this, this walk with Jesus and understanding how God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all work together. And I don't have a perfect understanding of that. But hopefully this gives us a small step closer to saying you belong to Him. You belong to Him. If any of you this morning, need to repent. If any of you need to be baptized into Christ, if you know that that's something that needs to be done today, then let's do that. Let's do that because this is a promise for you. This is something that God has given to each and every person of the world, and it's a choice that you have to make. It's between you and God. We don't want to force you. This is an individual choice. And so if you know this is something that you need to do, I hope that you'll do it today. I hope that this makes sense for you because it will change your life for eternity. If you need to respond, right now is a good time as we're singing this song. And together, let's stand and sing.